Your watch in TVC News at 10 will begin with reports of a Nigeria Air Force trainer aircraft which has reportedly crashed in Kaduna State. Although details of the incident are still sketchy, the pilot and the instructor pilot on board are feared to have died. The Nigeria Air Force authorities have also not confirmed the crash, but it was gathered that aircraft, the aircraft crashed at the flight time at the flight line of the NAV base in Kawo, the Gabi local government. This comes less than a year after NAV aircraft crashed in Kaduna, killing top military officials, including then Chief of Army Staff Ibrahim Atahiru. The Nigerian Air Force has suffered casualties in the last few years, losing at least four of its aircraft and several personnel from January to July last year. In March 2021, a military jet also crashed in Sambisa Forest with two crew members on board. Also in Kaduna, armed terrorists have reportedly killed six kidnapped victims abducted from Aguan Bolus community in Chinkuluku government area. The village head of Anguan Bolus Haruna Guna, in an exclusive interview with TVC News, uh, said the terrorists threatened to kill three women if their relatives failed to pay a 20 million naira ransom. Anguan Bolus community at Sabo was attacked two days after terrorists ambushed a Kaduna bound train on the 20th of March. Authorities confirmed that at least eight people were killed while more than 100 kidnapped persons still languish in captivity. We have been called that since we cannot produce that 20 million which the bandits are demanding, that they will kill three of our children, which very unfortunate they did that. Yesterday they called us and say we should go to expressway in Abuja way in Dusi after Sabunga that we will see our dead body and we will see six dead body. They say three is our own and three is from other side. Yes, yesterday they tell us that if we are not able to produce that money the next day, that's in today, by 12 o'clock, they are going to kill another three set of people. And with a spate of insecurity in the country, residents of Niger State are worried that terrorist attacks are slowly advancing towards the state capital. This follows Saturday afternoon's invasion of Gwada community in Shiruru local government area, just 20 kilometers from Mina. Chinami Bamai reports. It was a gloomy Easter celebration for residents of Gwada community in Shiruru local government area of Niger State. On Saturday, the 16th of April, a day before the Easter celebration, terrorists attacked the community, killing four persons, including a police officer, and abducted two residents. Yet again on Easter Sunday, security operatives repelled another attack by terrorists at Kwana Dandaudu in Munya local government area. This trend of events is giving residents cause to worry. It is two days after Easter and security situation around Niger State has been relatively calm. But residents in Mina, the state capital, are concerned that terrorists seem to be slowly advancing towards the state capital. There's never been an attack in the state capital, but the residents say if decisive measures are not taken, they are not certain how secure they will be in the coming days. Uh, sorry to say the security of Niger State has nothing to write home about this. Simple. Simple, honestly. Almost every four corner of Niger State has been almost captured. I was not happy hearing that the, the bandits attacked, but as for me now, we thank God, the security is still okay, but all this rural area, so we should just beg our government to still look for something to do about it. You know, even though here in Mina it's relatively peaceful, we have loved ones in those areas, so we can't sleep with our two eyes shut, not knowing that something could be happening to them, like me personally. My hometown was raided three weeks ago by bandits. So even though we are safe here in Mina, we can't, we can't, we can't say the same for our loved ones. No, actually, as for Mina, we are safe. Actually, but the thing is, just as you've mentioned, places like Guada, Sarkin Power, all of these axes are not safe. The state government had assured that terrorist attacks would soon be a forgotten issue, with concerted efforts to strengthen its internal security. But not much appears to have been achieved in this regard. Mina, the Niger state capital, is relatively secured. But residents say that if this security will be lasting, that the government must intensify its efforts in combating terrorists. 
that are causing damage and mayhem in the suburbs and the adjoining communities. Chenemi Bami, TVC News, Mina. And at least three persons have been killed with 19 others injured this evening when bomb explosion hit a local drinking spot at Kato Market in the Wari Adokola local government area of Taraba State. A sas in the community who spoke to us correspondent via telephone said the bomber, who was accompanied by another, disguised as customers and carefully dropped the explosive in a polythene bag before leaving the bar. Confirming the incident, spokesman of Taraba State Police Command Abdullahi Usman noted that this is the second time such explosion has taken place for the first at a Catholic school in Mutumbiyu. He also stated that security operatives have been drafted to the scene to commence investigation as well as doubts tension. Now, the situation is not different in the southeast with various reports of attacks. And this has brought Governor Hopu Zodima to the presidential villa. He met with President Buhari to discuss the spate of insecurity in Imo State and the recent clash between the military and bandits in Olu. The governor says the unrest has been brought under control. The Imo State governor met President Muhammad Buhari to brief him on the progress of work on two federal roads, the Oweri Olu Road and the Oweri Okigwe Road. But the meeting between these two centered on the security situation in his state, where security operatives clashed with bandits in Ihioma community in all the local government. But there are viral videos of the violent clash in Olu that accuses the army of extrajudicial killings. Despite conflicting reports of the incident that has triggered an online trending of hashtag Olu is bleeding, the governor insists these attacks are sponsored by people desperate to grab power. I just call, use this medium to call on Nigerian politicians to play politics without bitterness and stop uh, letting blood here and there in the name of uh, looking for power. If I am no longer in doubt as to who are the sponsors of banditry in Nigeria. Governor Hope Uzodima says the attack on an INEC registration center a few days ago was an afterthought by the criminals whose plans to attack a correctional center in Okigwe was scuttled. The bandits approaching Okigwe saw how fortified the place was and they now tried to escape through Itu Boma and they ran into INEC people where they were doing continuous voter registration and out of that anger and frustration attacked them. Uh, you must have heard that yesterday, uh, two of the bandits have been arrested. On the sideline of his interaction with State House correspondents in the presidential villa, the Imo State Governor reacted to suggestions by revered lawyer Afe Babalola calling for the suspension of the 2023 general election and an establishment of an interim national government to chart a new course for Nigeria. By May 29th, if there is no elected government, our constitution has not provided for an interregnum. It shouldn't give a gap, otherwise you are creating room for anarchy. And what will be the process for selecting the interim government? Because after May 29, the president may not have constitutional powers to function as a president. Some parts of the southeast have been on the edge and living in the fear of terror unleashed by gunmen on rampage. The recent reinforcement of security forces in the region has led to constant clashes between the gunmen and the military. For now, reports suggest the situation remains volatile. Femi Akonde, TVC News, Abuja. Still in the nation's capital, but away from security, communications and digital economy minister Isa Patami says the country now has the capacity to produce subscriber identification model cards for Africa. He was speaking at an interactive meeting with the leadership of the House on an ex executive bill seeking the creation and development of an ecosystem for technological enabled startups start in the country. National Assembly correspondent Jack Hadison reports. Startups are businesses based on innovative ideas and have prospects of creating a lot of jobs in the technology sector. But startups in Nigeria face a lot of challenges, including a lack of government support and funding. It is in filling these gaps 
but the executive has come up with a bill proposing a national council for digital innovation and entrepreneurship to be chaired by the president. This meeting at the instance of the House leader is to get more insight into the proposed law. You will not stop the opposition from, of course, raising a lot of issues. But when such engagements are sustained, then definitely at the end of the day, when we present the bill on the floor, yes. we will be coming from the point of strength. Yes. The Minister of Communications takes the legislators through the goals of the bill. He believes if passed into law, the bill will bring about job creation and increased gross domestic product. Some of them because of lack of the enabling environment. Their offices are here in Nigeria, their activities are here, but they will go to another company and register there. Why? Because there is no coordination here and there is no any law to protect the business. It dismisses fears that the proposed council will affect the operations of the NCC. We have banned the importation of SIM cards. When we came on board, even SIM cards were being imported into Nigeria. But today we support our local markets to the extent that we have the capacity to produce SIM cards for Africa, not only for Nigeria. Lawmakers ask probing concerns. We're talking about funding support for startups at this level when we're just making, uh, <clears throat> providing the legislative framework for it, I thought that we should be looking at long-term loans. Don't you think also you are now trying to take over the powers of National Assembly in reviewing uh, those establishments, they have establishment uh, acts. Both the federal government and the National Assembly are concerned about the number of agencies we have in this country. I wonder if this uh, all important law cannot be warehoused, cannot be kept in custody of an existing agency. The minister appeared to have allayed the fears of the lawmakers at the meeting and concerns to be raised by the larger house on the bill are expected to be addressed by the leader of the house as the mouthpiece of the federal government on the floor of the chambers. Joke Edsa, TVC News, Abuja. More controversies continue to emerge in the scandal involving puppies of Christland schools. The police have invited the parties involved in the minor sex scandal during their trip to Dubai. Spokesperson of the Lagos State Police Command, Benjamin Dane, confirmed that all parties involved have been contacted, but they could not immediately establish if the invited persons had reported to the State Criminal Investigation Department party at the time of this report. The Lagos Police Command has promised to thoroughly investigate the alarm raised by a mother in a viral video, but Chrysland School has denied the allegations that the 10-year-old was raped. Senior correspondent Ivy Cannon reports. Nigerians spoke up to a rather disturbing video of a mother who claimed her 10-year-old daughter, a student of Chrysland School, was raped by her mates. Uh, when it happened, I said, sir, what happened? He said, Julian did not tell you. I said, no, Julian did she not She further tell accused me. the management of the school of concealing the alleged rape, which was recorded, but rather than report to her, they she took her daughter for pregnancy test. And lied to her that they were taking her for COVID test. They took them, they took her almost three times for COVID test. Please, is it possible? Do they use blood sample for COVID tests? Do they use urine for COVID tests? The frenzy of this video has gone viral on social media, prompting the Lagos State government to immediately shut down all Christland schools in the state. This is to avoid a repeat of the Doen College saga where protesters flooded the entrance of the school. Seeing the uproar the mother's video has generated, the police say there was no way they were going to wait for an official complaint. Invitation has been sent out to all the parties involved in the case, and um, investigation has commenced in earnest. Many are also worried about the jurisdiction of the acts by the minors committed in Dubai. It depends on the outcome of investigation. We might have to involve the Interpol. They have a global jurisdiction, so. In any case, we would make sure um, justice is served. According to reports, the video recordings of the acts involving the students has over one million views on social media, bringing to question the morality of those who have been sharing the videos. It is the failure of the parents. It is the failure of the society, of the government, and the church cannot be absolved from the blame. Everywhere you turn to, you see, uh, sexual immorality being advertised on every side. So instead of um, 
casting blame on anybody, I would say it is rather a challenge to society. It shows that the parent has so much to do. Yes, the school has the responsibility to educate these children, but what they are building will be upon the foundation that has been laid by parents. Meanwhile, in a statement by the school signed by a member of the advisory board, Akin Fadeye, the school denied the allegation that a 10-year-old primary six student was raped Ivy Kano. TVC News, Lagos. Let's talk to a parent and gender advocate, Tessie Biobaku, for more on this development. The social media has been a gag following um, the Chris Land sex scandal, and everyone seemed to have become a, a life coach of some sort, um, throwing in their weight on what should have been done better in this regard. You agree, however, that parenting seems to be more challenging now than it was before, right? That's true. Yeah, parenting is, um, thanks for having me on board. Um, good evening. Um, parenting, yes, is quite difficult right now. It's, it's not easy, um, actually because um, children are exposed. Uh, the social media especially goes a long way. But you see, um, we need to take this, um, we need to look at where this is really, where we could deal with this issue. Um, like they say, charity begins at home. Socialization begins at home. Um, when you look at socialization, you look at um, that of the home front, the peer group, you're looking at the culture, you're looking at um, in terms of even the societal um, pressure, um, in terms of even economical pressure that um, a lot of parents are going through. You know, at the earlier stage, you talked about a lot of people have become one motivational speaker or the other because of this, because everybody is pained. Um, you know, it's something that um, uh, you wouldn't expect, you know, in any way to be happening. It's ki it kind of is disheartening. As a parent, I, you know, I feel, you know, I, I can't imagine what... Um, the boy child, the girl child, the parent of this girl is going through. And of course, it's, it's quite saddening that um, such an act, again, will be shared by people. You know, there's so much mockery, there's so much um, judgmental, you know, um, thing going on with regards to this issue. There's been a lot of vices in the in the in the in the society, but um, having to have this escalate into this kind of um, act is is kind of disheartening. It's really, really, really sad. How would you ask parents to deal with the exposure of their children to uh, tools like social media, for instance? Um, uh, there's an allegation out there that the the you know young girl involved has a TikTok account and you know developments like that. Social media really is not altogether bad, as it were. It's not. But, but it's not. how how do you think that parents can begin to handle this better? You see, um, in we have this mentality that comes with, okay, um, we've gone through this when we were growing up, we went through the hard time. We don't want our children, you know, to go through that, um, you know, to go through that route, you know, the hard way, the only way. So right now it's more like um, we are overindulging our children. We must um, I mean, strike the balance. I mean, um, we can't have our children, I, I don't know, but, no matter how the society has evolved, uh, you don't, I don't see why we should have children having phones where they are exposed to um, um, certain things that um, probably they, they, they are not even so well aware of, you know, they are not, they don't have enough awareness with regards to it. Um, uh, but, you know, the thing is, um, when we look at the home, I'll still take this back to the home. You, who are the people we expose our children to? You know, we are caught up with a society where we have a lot of economic pressure on parents. Um, you see parents where they will go out early in the morning. You know, for her to be in that kind of school, you can imagine the kind of financial um, um, burden, or I wouldn't say it's a burden, the financial thing that will come with um, with regards to what the parents have to 
you know, pay in terms of school fees and all that. So you see that economic financial pressure on parents where parents are not really there that much to look out for the children and see what is going on with them. Parenting goes beyond we paying the school fees. It's about being there to look out for our children, look out for um, changes in them, because definitely there will, be, there will have been some changes and all that. I mean, I don't want to believe as a mother or as a parent that I'll have my child on TikTok, on um, Instagram, and, you know, having to show all those things. I, I mean, I'm sure that if that exposure is given to, if the parents were very conscious of it, I'm sure they would have been able to caution that child. Actually, you know, when the mother was interviewed, she said when they said, oh, it was about, it was just that the daughter kissed somebody, and she said she was going to make sure she cautioned the child. So I can imagine if she was really exposed to a lot of things that um, that child has been exposed to. So that still boils down to what are we leaving our children with? Who do they see as mentors outside us? Absolutely. A lot of molestation that mm. happens with the boy child, with the girl child, basically even comes from people that you least expect, family members, drivers, mates. And, and you're all saying that. that the society much um, turn the touch back to itself and identify uh, what is yes, wrong with the Yes, there's a lot of, structure. we must have those uh, reorientation. Absolutely. There are certain things that, because every act that we, behavior act, is learned and it could be unlearned. It's a good you place know, to live. Uh, uh, thank you so much for your contribution, Gender Advocate, Will Bako, who joins us live on TV City News at 10. Now, Thank Nigerians, you for having me on board. Indeed. Nigerians are becoming worried about rapidly collapsing moral values and the effect it's having on society. It's why leaders of the Ansaruddin Muslim community of Nigeria are using this Ramadan period to seek a restoration of lost family values through its 27th annual Ramadan lecture in Abuja. Maria Mohammed was there. The advent of social media has led to a rapid deterioration of morals due to access by children to all forms of content on the internet. Most families are struggling to unsteal values in children who are now independent more than ever before. The consequence of this exposure has been more children engaging in immoral activities. But some blame this decline in family values on an increasing lack in solid parental upbringing. <laughs> It is why the Ansaruddin Muslim community is addressing this issue by sensitizing Muslims on the need to instill family values in their children. At this event, leaders of this group urge Muslim community and parents to pray consistently as this remains a key ingredient that can bring everything back to normal. And while it acknowledges the enormous burden the present economic situation puts on parents in catering for their children, the group insists parents must still be there to provide moral instructions. Only prayer can change everything into the normal. To win communal responsibility on all the children are taken seriously by all the community members without any sentiment of whose children or parents are involved. Most of our mothers today, they run after money and forget about the duties of their primary duties, which is affecting the society. Muslims are advised to pull the Islamic values as it is the only way to avoid moral decadence. Maria Mohammed, TVC News, Abuja. The Ashwaji Bola Tinubu Media Office says presidential aspirant Bola Tinubu is a target of blasphemous campaign. The media office noted that poster campaigns portraying the biblical story of Judas Iscariot's betrayal of Jesus Christ is only aimed at provoking anger against the person and aspiration of Ashwa Jutinubu. The TMO stated that the act is an irresponsible and insensitive political propaganda that seeks to exploit religious sentiments to manipulate public perception against Ashwa Jutinubu's presidential aspiration. They say Ashwa Jutinubu in words and actions has demonstrated religious tolerance and accommodation, who believes in cardinal principle of the Nigerian constitution that no one should suffer discrimination on the basis of creed or opinion. Bolatinubu's media office is appealing to Nigerians to ignore such campaigns of slander. 
Let's Talk Health now, a study aimed at advancing community access to equitable COVID-19 response in 48 selected communities across three West African countries has commenced. The project will take place in Ghana, Senegal and Nigeria. This is expected to provide necessary data on the impact and response of COVID-19 to help in proper planning of developmental programs and policies. Helen Osamide Akins reports and we'll be back with business news right after this. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic is one the world is yet to recover from. The pandemic resulted in the death of over 6 million people and destructed lives all over the world. Lockdown to curtail the spread of the virus brought about such issues as loneliness, overcrowding of small spaces, effects on children being at home, restriction of movements, which in turn amplified a lot of psychological indices in West African countries. This group is concerned over the mental and psychological impact of the pandemic on Africans. It is set to carry out a study aimed at advancing community access to equitable COVID-19 response. The project Advancing Community Access to Equitable COVID-19 Response is an 18-month project aimed at building a West Africa community that is fair, more vibrant and tolerant. With this project, we will intensify work with the media and local community structures and deliver women and good stories, highlighting the impact of youth and women groups in selected communities. We will also engage and inform policy and institutional leaders on community initiatives and how those initiatives can strengthen the government's response to provide equity in terms of vaccine and palliative distribution in response to the ongoing pandemic and subsequent one. The study will also highlight the contributions of young people in building new narratives and the role they played to sensitize their communities during the pandemic. The project will also give government a sense of direction and a reference point in case of future and other outbreak of such magnitude. Helena Samedei Kings, TVC News, Abuja.